But is the new Labour government bending the knee to the unions? We're asking this because after a series of bumper pay offers, the RMT union's Mick Lynch has been seen uh, storming, uh, you could say that, that into storm? the Department of Transport, walking with confidence, I'd say. Um, well, like a man who knows he's about to come into some money. Maybe, maybe, into the Department for Transport with uh, most likely a blank cheque for the government to sign off on. I mean, it does... <sighs> I mean, it's easy for him to say, well, you've given this lot, yeah. uh, this pay offer, why not us? Um, so, yeah. Well, is this what we should expect from a cabinet who received hundreds of thousands of pounds in union donations? Honestly, how can the Prime Minister and the Chancellor say no to the people who donated around £2.4 million to their party? The other aspect of this, though, is that Keir Starmer is now saying he wants more people to work from home. What does that mean? A load of empty trains, some very expensive train drivers... Ah, doesn't seem to quite add up, does it? No, not quite. Have the Labour government fallen into the trap and capitulated uh, to their union friends? So let's bring in our GB News political editor, uh, Christopher Hope. Um, do we have any updates on this meeting uh, between Mick Lynch and, and various officials at the Department for Transport? I mean, from your, from your experience, do you imagine that Mick Lynch will get what he wants? Afternoon, both. It, 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 I would say it looks like it because the RMT union trained train guards and people who maintain the network were, were having all sorts of strike action over the past year or so. There was an offer of three and a half percent pay rise for this year back in April that was turned down by Mick Lynch. If you look at the detail of the Aslef deal, which is a new benchmark, that was 14 percent over three years, including four and a half percent for this year and if you can it will look like that's what um uh, the RMT are going for four and a half percent for this year um there's a broader trend here of everyone following and rising upwards with this new Labour government coming in uh Mick Lynch he said today we really need to move on from the belligerent and hostile attitude of the last government and reset industrial relations to allow rail workers and, and RFA, that's uh, um, uh, uh, naval uh, merchant seamen, um, seafarers who get on with, the, with their job. What that means is that employers under the last Tory government were trying to attach strings to these pay deals. It could be productivity, it could be making sure they work harder um, for money they receive. And that looks like it's been dropped, certainly with the Aslef pay deal. Um, the RMT is meeting with Network Rail on Thursday. So you can imagine some news pretty soon on this. It does look like it's going in one direction, which makes it more expensive, um, uh, maybe for taxpayers and certainly for companies to pay these people. Christopher, if there is no incentive to work any harder or no increased production and Labour are simultaneously saying that more people can work from home, is this not just going to add to inflation? Well, yes, the, the, the jury's out on that. Uh, they, they, there has been some comment from the Bank of England saying it could be inflationary, but they keep watch on that. Um, as big a deal, though, is, is the numbers of private sector workers. If they, start, if they start looking across to the public, public sector and that becomes a ratchet for the private sector, it could become inflationary. And that certainly is a worry with inflation down at 2.2% for this month, scheduled to hit 2.75% by the end of the year and then back to 2% the following year. That means that as long as it stays at 2%, everything is, is affordable, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a concern and a worry. And people like um, others are, are concerned about this and wonder what, uh, what Jacob Rees-Mogg thinks He'll be concerned too. Indeed. Well, thank you very much indeed, Christopher Hope, our political editor there in Westminster. So yes, for some more reaction, uh, let's get the thoughts of GB News presenter and former Conservative MP Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg. Uh, Sir Jacob, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, there is a concern that Labour have come into power and they've decided that in order to end the strikes, they will deliver very generous pay offers to the trade unions. It would appear that... Uh, once you give a very generous pay offer, funnily enough, uh, more demands follow. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, it's Kipling's poem about the Dane Geld. If you pay the Dane Geld, the Dane doesn't go away. And they've given this enormous payoff to the doctors, to the junior doctors. Well, the nurses settled at a much more reasonable level. The nurses are bound to come back for more. Why wouldn't they? When you see this largesse being given to the public sector unions, who of course are the major funders of the Labour Party. So they're using taxpayers' money to pay off their friends. It's really pretty grubby. And 
I don't think enough people are talking about this at the moment, Jacob, but you, you alluded to it, which is that there was a period of time there where the teachers, some people who work in the NHS as well, and some civil servants looked as though they possibly would have settled at about 5.5%. But if they're now seeing the junior doctors getting 22% and Mick Lynch and M Mick Whelan and all that lot getting around 15%, why on earth would they settle at 5.5%, which ramps up the bill yet again, doesn't it? Well, giving money to Aslev is the most stupid thing that you can possibly do. It is an extremely aggressive union, and it shows that the worse you behave, the more obstructive you are, the more you insist on antediluvian, outdated working practices, uh, the better you will do. And this is what Labour did in the 1970s. Tony Blair had the wit to learn that lesson and didn't give in in this way. Keir Starmer is giving in, mm. and we will have much more union trouble because of it. So some people there, Jacob, might point out a few uh, indiscretions during the Conservatives' time in government. There was lots of PPE contracts or stuff like that given out that were seen as, in a way, then, at the time, jobs for the boys. Is this not a little bit like that? No, not at all. Um, the the um, PPE contracts are an entirely different matter. Bear in mind, government ministers do not issue contracts. They are issued by civil servants. Uh, we needed PPE urgently. The whole world was buying PPE and a very small amount of PPE was bought that turned out not to be usable. But actually we needed or we thought we needed vast quantities of it and the um, uh, procurement agencies within government did a heroic job to get the quantities we needed. So no, it's nothing like that. Mm. Now, Jacob, there is an argument, though, too, isn't there, that when the Conservatives were in power, we had a huge number of strikes, we lost a huge amount of money as a result, the economy suffered as a result of what felt like endless strikes. Uh, ministers in this new Labour government would say that this will actually save us money. If you pay people, they'll go to work, they won't continue to strike, and then the problem's fixed and it won't end up costing us more in the long run. Well, it's a completely bogus argument because... Um, it becomes inflationary because everybody starts asking for these pay increases. And actually, when people go on strike, if what you do is respond by giving them super pay increases, you make the problem worse. You give an incentive for more people to go on strike, and therefore you end up losing more days from strikes, not fewer days. The last Conservative government's absolutely right to stand up to militant trade unionists. Again, look at the lessons of post-war British industrial history, giving in to aggressive trade unions, the Red Robbos that we're now getting coming back uh, in the form of Mick Lynch and so on, mm. is a way to disaster economically. Well, we've also, by the way, got Border Force going out on strike in a few days' time, I think, as well. So we can add that to the list, can't we? But, Jacob, you are in the absolutely resplendent location of your own home. Um, what's, what have you got coming up on your show this evening? Well, we're going to be talking a bit more about this because of the government saying that you lose productivity by expecting people to turn up to work, which is one mm. of the most bizarre arguments I've ever heard. There has been no increase in public sector productivity. Indeed, it's declined since 1997. And now this government is encouraging, supporting, backing more working from home which means public services don't get delivered properly. Try ringing HMRC, if you don't believe me, a test for GB News viewers between now and 8 o'clock. Ring HMRC and see if you get through. If you do get through, mail Mog. <laughs> Good stuff. I like that. Fantastic. Uh, every single time you try, as a bloke who has spent an unfortunate amount of time trying to get through to HMLC, uh, yeah, every single time you ring, it doesn't matter what time of day or night, it's always we are experiencing a very high volume of calls, so, which, I, which, I, which I'm not entirely sure I believe. Yes, anyway, Jacob, thank you very much. We look forward to your no, show. No, so no, Jacob, that, oh, God, go on. My pleasure. All right, we'll see you okay. in a bit. Take care. Bye-bye. I was Bye -bye. just going to say... Um, <laughs> You've got to go. OK, thank you. Bye. Oh, Bye. no, well, there's a cliffhanger. What, Perhaps what, you can tell us later. One thank of the you most awkward ends to an interview ever. But I'll see you in a second, Jacob, all right? <laughs> OK. <laughs>